it's really very high time to put the foot on the brake, I would say. My name is Ole Johansson. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. I work at the Karolinska Institute, which is very famous for its Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. And I have been studying the area of neuroscience for many years in the area of health effects of electromagnetic radiation, like from mobile phones, indoor telephones, Wi-Fi. And uh, today, if you look into the scientific literature, it's an overwhelming number of papers clearly saying that uh, molecules, cells, tissue pieces, organs, experimental animals, as well as humans, are at jeopardy. Uh, and the main findings could be summarized that you see uh, biological and biomedical effects at very low exposure levels far uh, below the current public exposure guidelines and interest is very much nowadays focused on long-term effects at so-called non-thermal levels meaning that you don't get a heating from your mobile phone for instance but we are talking about other biologically important effects which can only be understood really at very detailed level involving for instance so-called ionic channels transmitter, release, uptake, degradation, etc, etc, etc. A lot of very small details in biology, but that will generate in long-term sense health effects that could be very, very serious. In the general arena, very much focuses on cancer, but maybe that's uh, actually the least important effect. Uh, other effects be, may be much more important uh, and much more um, general in the sense, for instance, impact on the immune system, which is supposed to protect you against whatever bacteria or microbes or molecules that enter your body effects on fertility, the capacity to get children and grandchildren and so on, and effects on various mental functions including short-term memory, you have concentration capacity decreases after microwave radiation exposure, headache, sleep capacity, sleep quality, sleep length, and I could keep on like this, but the public debate is very much focused on cancer, which is of course very important. But the other effects that are reported in the scientific literature may be much more striking, much more serious and may come also much earlier. Because when you look on some of the scientific experiments, you can have effects, effects within minutes, hours or days. Uh, for instance, on the immune system, uh, on the, the basis for fertility, uh, on various uh, subjective parameters like headache, uh, problems with your sleep quality, uh, problems with learning capacity, concentration difficulties and so on. And uh, from that point of view, maybe a society, if you are a little bit cynical, it could sort of live with a certain number, very small number of brain tumors but if all, for instance, Danish school kids get a decrease in their concentration capacity and a decrease of their short-term memory capacity, that's not good for Denmark. If you make some extrapolations from the current knowledge in the scientific literature, it's really very high time to put the foot on the brake, I would say, because some of these effects are not really revealed until further generations have been cycled. Maybe you could see an effect like in the fifth generation in the future when it's very too late to say that, hey, we have to stop this exposure. 
and therefore I'm as a scientist I'm a little bit um, surprised that politicians they take these kind of chances with the whole population and the population has never been really informed no one has asked you if you want to be whole body irradiated 24 hours around the clock every day of the week you are while we sit here in Copenhagen we are exposed to microwave levels that compared to natural background are of biblical proportions they are astronomically uh, very much higher and no one has asked the population is this all right or not i have asked for instance the former swedish government i have said to them that since they have allowed public exposure of all swedes they must know from a scientific point of view that this is safe so i asked them to send the relevant scientific papers and they didn't send a single one they had nothing you know mm -hmm. so they just take a chance with the population and hopefully it will turn out to be completely safe and there will be no risk but that will also mean you know that thousands and thousands of scientific papers in well controlled scientific journals using peer review based evaluation systems all of these articles have to be wrong at the same time and that has never ever happened before in science history. What you say actually is that there, there must be a risk. I mean it is definitely a risk and for some of these areas the risk is uh, from a proportional point of view very very high. 